there are really two parts to having a successful trial in maximum justice in one of these disc cases. And they're exciting because so many lawyers have such a heavy inventory of those. So this has got such universal application and it's so reproducible. But there are really two main parts to it. A, you got to prove the injury. If you don't have the injury, I don't care what you come up with after that. If you don't prove the injury, you're wasting your time. There's nothing after that. And they're very good on the defense of unproving the injury, even though there is an injury. And Matt is going to share with you how to win the battle over the injury, not by eking over the finish line, just hands down, game over, we win the injury. And then the second part is what I like to think of as like a catalyst. Now we have the injury. We now have to awaken the jury to understand, all right, you got an injury, but this is a big injury. This is a bad injury. So we can then turn the two pieces together into maximum justice. It's like Matt's grabbing the essential element out of the core of the earth. And one addition we do that since you cannot put in the demonstrative, but you can put in the film, is we brand or burn that imagery into their brain by not just putting them up on the screen that we will be doing, but we will have those key photos of the colorized versus the uncolorized, but the exact same picture side by side on a board. So you can put that up repeatedly for the jury and right before closing and a rebuttal before they go. And when you tell them you're going to be seeing that this image without the colorization, but the colorization changes nothing. It was just there to help train your eyes that aren't radiologists to see what the radiologists see. And once that's done, they might as well have the demonstrative. As a good cross examiner, it's fool's gold to go try and put up MRIs with a radiologist, you're going to get your ass kicked. Don't do it. But what I've learned with Matt is if you truly understand these, now, of course, don't go nuts and have a slideshow with their expert, but to come in surgically and show you're being deceptive is smart. But to do it, and the reason lawyers don't want to do it, the one reason I wouldn't have wanted to do it is I didn't have this kind of in-depth understanding that gave me the comfort level. End of this story is we were able to bring our expert radiologist back in rebuttal. And we put him up and we didn't talk to him at all. And I put him on the stand and I said, Dr. So-and-so, do you know what we're going to ask you? And he said, I do not. I said, do you know, do I know what your answer is going to be? He said, of course you don't, because I don't even know what the question is. So I couldn't have told you what my answer would be. I said, this is going to be interesting. The jury and I are going to hear it at the same time. And we went through that explanation of how, why is it important that you, why do you take all the slices? Because they're usually, while they look big in a big whole long spine, it's a smaller area and you'll miss it if you don't do a bunch of spine uh, slices. That's why MRIs take a, you know, dozens and dozens and hundreds of these tiny, tiny slices. I said, what happens if you move the slice down a little? And I, you know how I knew to ask that? Not because I talked to our expert, I hadn't because Matt taught me. And so I said, what happens if you move it down a click or two? He goes, uh, it'll either look smaller, it may go all the way away. I said, really? I said, now if you click down and it goes away, when looking at it, does that mean there is no hernia? She goes, of course not. It means you're looking at the wrong view. And I said, is that what radiologists do in real life? They click, 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 because they know they can miss it. He says, now, that's the first thing you learn in radiology school. So I said, that shouldn't be any surprise to any board certified. Of course not. Why would that be a surprise? I don't understand your question. I said, that's all right. The jury understands. Now, let's go to the, the slide you put up. What slide number is it? He put it up and there's a big ass herniation. And then I said, well, you, how many clicks would it take you to get to this slide? Because we had written it on the flip chart when the damn other expert had been there. He goes, well, that's just two clicks now. I said, all right, click down. Let's see what we see. He goes, yeah, that's what happens. I said, is there a herniation? He goes, not on that slide. It's the wrong slide. I said, does it mean it's gone? He goes, no. And he clicks up because it's right there. You just move. I said, would you ever expect a radiologist to not understand the distinction of what just happened? He goes, of course not. Boom. Perceived problems in your case. 
you look at your case and say, oh my God, there's not a lot of visible property damage in those photos. You look at your case and say, my client had a crash two years before and won three years after. You look at your case and say, there's a gap in treatment for a year. And what happens? Before you start undervaluing it, which is, is going to happen, you don't like that case so much. You start feeling like, man, I wish I had a better case load. And if that's in your heart, it's impossible to believe. And we'd love to say, all right, let's go get a bunch of perfect cases. Well, you know what? Life's messy. So trials are messy because trials are about life. So you're not going to get a perfect case. You can get an on its surface, bigger looking injury, but they're all going to have problems. So how do we eliminate the obstacle to loving your case? Get rid of the problems. How do you get rid of the problems? You realize most of them are fictitious problems. I've got all these strategies I've been teaching. Don't eat the bruises means blemishes in your case and how to deal with them. And I realized to some degree, I've fallen short myself. It's not about cutting a problem out. It was never a damn problem. And when you realize all these things that we thought were a problem, and if you read my book said, Hallelujah, Mitnick told me how to fix the problem, we don't need to fix them. The truth, if you understand, they never were a problem. And I'm going to show you why in a minute. Is that sounding like some big gap in treatment and a big problem? Now, here's the missing piece. And I didn't dawn on me until I started really thinking about this recently, talking to all our lawyers about it. And it's this. There's a fatal flaw and a trick, a false assumption to the whole damn thing of gap in treatment. What is it? This is this. It's an equation. No doctor, no pain. You don't go to the doctor, you don't have pain. I can rule the pain out because you quit going to the doctor. Now, every one of your jurors knows that ain't so. You can bring it up in void hour. How many of you have pain that's been around for a long time? Do you go to the doctor? Did you go early? Yeah. Did you get your answers? Yeah. When you found out there was no cure, did you keep going week after week after week? No. Did that mean your pain, did your pain go away just because you went, didn't go to the doctor all the time anymore? No. What the hell are you talking about? Now the jury gets it. That is a, doesn't add up. You cannot say no doctor equals no pain. So then the last thing they do in that scenario, they say no doctor, no pain, which is just a lie. And then they build off the lie with a totally logical, nonsensical conclusion therefrom. They say, since it must have gone away since you went to the, didn't go to the doctor, lie, that means you had pain in a specific place in your body. And it was very specific kind of pain. And they say, and it disappeared. It just vanished, poof, into the air. And then a year later reappeared in the exact same body part, in the exact same location in the body part. And it's the identical kind of pain, but it just came out of the sky like a lightning bolt. It's got nothing to do with the crash. Now, who's going to believe that bullshit? Well, the starting point is you ought not to because there is a logical explanation. The pain never went away. You just stopped going to the doctor for a while because you had to get on with life and it takes too much time and you ended up going back later or not because brand new pain appeared out of the sky, but because it was wearing on me.